Hello everyone and uh, welcome to uh, this webinar on SSL TLS 1.3 and um, before I start uh, uh, I would like to remind you that uh, uh, there is a question and answer tool uh, uh, so you can use it uh, while I'm talking uh, to ask uh, specific questions and we'll try to address it uh, while we go. So first of all I'll, um, I'm going to talk to you I'm going to introduce you on SSL and uh, its importance in, in the IoT market. Uh, um, SSL uh, enables security uh, in uh, uh, network communications. Uh, we define security um, from, uh, with, with the uh, three uh, major aspects of it. The confidentiality, uh, so the ability of preventing uh, eavesdropping of the communication. Uh, authentication, um, so the ability to prevent impersonation and the integrity, uh, which uh, prevents modification. All, th all three of them are addressed uh, in uh, uh, the SSL TLS uh, uh, protocol definition. Um, next slide, please. And uh, SSL uh, provides uh, one type of security. Uh, in, uh, in fact, it's end-to-end -end security. That means that uh, only the two endpoints of the communication uh, are um, involved uh, in establishing the, the security and, uh, and they use standard protocols uh, and uh, ciphers uh, um, th that are the same uh, on the remote endpoint uh, regardless of its implementation. And uh, this mechanism uh, is already used in, uh, in classic uh, uh, IT uh, for securing the most popular communication protocols such as HTTPS. Uh, but it's also used uh, uh, recently uh, for IoT-specific uh, uh, secure communication protocols such as MQTT that has uh, uh, its own um, secure version in MQTTS. Uh, the good thing about end-to-end -end, uh, security is that uh, uh, your security is completely uh, implemented uh, at the endpoint level, so it doesn't have to rely on intermediate nodes uh, uh, where you don't have control um, in the network or third party uh, secure layer um, such as data link layer for a specific uh, communication technology. But instead, we're talking about uh, standard protocols. Uh, um, so protocols that uh, um, uh, ideally all machines are able to, uh, to speak. Uh, so next slide. Uh, when we're talking about security in IoT, um, of course IoT uh, share its roots with the embedded market uh, and uh, uh, the older of us remember the embedded market uh, as it used to be uh, a few decades ago. So basically mixed signal processing uh, on integrated uh, devices uh, with no possibility of communicating uh, uh, with the outside world. Nowadays, of course, uh, the situation has changed a lot because uh, a lot of these embedded devices uh, um, are connected to a network uh, and sometimes it's the internet even, so they require secure communication. Um, what we want to achieve uh, in designing our embedded systems nowadays is the easy uh, interaction with the um, existing uh, uh, IT infrastructure and uh, existing uh, servers that already speak standard protocols uh, to secure the connections. Uh, uh, so we need to uh, implement the same family of protocols, but next slide. Uh, of course, we're talking about uh, uh, different technologies there. So different uh, requirements uh, uh, um, in terms of resources uh, uh, for the SSL implementation. Uh, we need to take into account the limited computational power of these devices and uh, uh, the integration of uh, uh, sometimes non-standard communication libraries, uh, sometimes uh, it's TCPIP implementations uh, or proprietary communication stacks in these technologies. Uh, so next, please. Uh, uh, what we do at Wolf SSL is exactly this. So we design uh, the standard protocols, the standard ciphers, uh, uh, and we implement them uh, on embedded systems. Uh, so we care about uh, keeping our footprint as small as possible uh, to include uh, hardware acceleration uh, made available by um, um, manufacturers. Uh, and uh, um, we try to be uh, as modular as possible to allow scalability uh, due to the different nature of uh, uh, embedded systems nowadays. Um, 
The library is very uh, easy to integrate uh, uh, across different systems uh, because of its callback based uh, uh, input output API, uh, which allows for uh, different uh, um, programming uh, um, approaches uh, to, to implement uh, uh, the, the, the secure communication. Uh, uh, so, including both bare metal applications uh, and real time OS or embedded OS integration. Um, the code base uh, is really mature. We're talking about, uh, as Riley said, um, Walt SSL existed uh, in its first version already in, in 2004. And uh, uh, we are busy, um, the whole team, maintaining the library. Uh, and uh, um, uh, it, it's it's a very active project, uh, but also with a very long history. Um, we provide professional support 24 and seven. Um, we have very fast release, uh, release cycle. Um, that's characteristic of uh, uh, this kind of project, like open source projects. And of course, uh, as already mentioned, uh, uh, everything uh, uh, is released uh, as open source on our GitHub page. And uh, you can find it uh, uh, released under the uh, terms of the GTL license. Um, next, uh, we are, uh, are going to talk about uh, uh, the novelties introduced uh, in the new uh, protocol um, specification for secure communication, which is TLS 1.3. Um, TLS 1.3 is uh, the successor uh, of the previous uh, uh, protocol standard, TLS 1.2, which has been out for about uh, 10 years and uh, it's been uh, um, replaced uh, uh, in August uh, uh, 2018, so last year. Um, we did already have a preliminary implementation uh, uh, while TLS 1.3 uh, was in a very early stage because we understood how important uh, TLS 1.3 uh, would be uh, in, the, in the context of uh, securing communications. Uh, and uh, I'm going to, to um, explain why on uh, the next slide. Uh, there are a few major improvements in TLS 1.3. Um, most of them are listed here. We do have a faster handshake. Um, and we, we're gonna uh, go a bit in details of this. Um, TLS 1.3 supports uh, full ses session encryption, uh, has uh, new, uh, more, uh, new stronger cipher suits, and uh, deprecates uh, uh, all vulnerable cipher suits and algorithms uh, uh, that were present in TLS 1.2 and uh, um, um, through, throughout the time uh, they, they've been, uh, they, there have been uh, uh, many vulnerabilities discovered uh, um, on the design of the protocol itself. Um, so one important part of uh, TLS 1.3 itself uh, um, is uh, to remove uh, all these features uh, that have been discovered uh, uh, being insecure or obsolete um, in, in the last 10 years. Um, and so for, first, uh, first uh, uh, improvement is the, uh, the handshake. So we're talking about uh, uh, um, improved latency during the TLS handshake. TLS handshake is that procedure at the beginning of uh, um, establishing a secure connection uh, where um, the client and the server um, exchange um, cryptographic uh, uh, payloads to, uh, to initiate uh, the, the secure communication. Uh, classically, um, uh, TLS 1.2, as its predecessors, uh, required uh, uh, at least uh, two round trip time uh, uh, to complete the handshake. Uh, and TLS 1.3, uh, we have improved, uh, they have improved the latency of uh, um, uh, beginning of the communication by uh, reducing uh, the number of uh, RTT required uh, to, uh, to one. Uh, that, this means that the client can start uh, uh, sending encrypted data uh, immediately after uh, the, the server has done replying uh, to the first packet. Um, what it means for, for us, for embedded developers, is that uh, uh, less RTT means faster handshake, uh, uh, but means also less traffic, uh, which is very important if your channel of communication is not the traditional internet, but it's some uh, um, uh, proprietary uh, wireless, uh, like LP1. Uh, and of course, uh, less power used uh, during the handshake. Um, 
which means uh, uh, better energy um, management uh, from the from the embedded device. So definitely uh, a, an aspect of, T, of, uh, uh, of TLS 1.3 that comes towards uh, um, uh, improving the, the, the features for, for embedded devices. Uh, let's have a look at the handshake, uh, how it looks like in the next slide. Uh, this is the classic uh, TLS 1.1, 1.2 handshake. Uh, so the client sends uh, its first uh, hello packet. Uh, um, the server replies with the certificate. Uh, and there is a key exchange uh, uh, um, uh, procedure that takes another round trip. Uh, and you can see that the client uh, is only able to send encrypted data uh, after uh, these two round trips. As we mentioned, uh, TLS 1.3, uh, so in the next slide, uh, reduces uh, this uh, handshake time um, by uh, initiating the, the key share and the certificate uh, um, exchange uh, since the first packet uh, exchange between client and server, uh, which means that uh, um, as soon as the server uh, sends back its first reply, the client can already uh, start sending uh, uh, its first uh, uh, encrypted payload, which means, for instance, uh, in uh, in protocols uh, um, uh, with with a with a request uh, reply such as HTTPS, um, uh, this reduces consistently uh, the um, uh, the way the, uh, the the time to um, establish a new uh, secure connection because the client can already send its GET request uh, in after the first round trip. Uh, so the overhead, uh, if compared to its uh, 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 non-secure um, counterpart, uh, uh, it's it's minimal. Um, but of course, uh, the, the uh, major um, uh, issues that uh, TLS 1.3 aims to solve is about uh, uh, security. So uh, if we have a look at the encryption algorithms in the next slide, um, we see that TLS uh, uses a, um, a number of uh, uh, ciphers uh, to secure data. These ciphers are normally of different uh, types, uh, probably um, um, hashing functions are used uh, uh, for um, checking data integrity, uh, block and stream, and stream ciphers uh, are the, the bulk symmetric cipher part. These are normally very fast uh, um, algorithms uh, uh, that are used to uh, encrypt data. Uh, using the same key for encryption and decryption. So that's why uh, the name uh, symmetric uh, ciphers. And, uh, and of course, the public key options, uh, which describes uh, um, how uh, the key is exchanged and uh, um, how authentication is performed uh, and, uh, uh, and the algorithm uh, that are used um, are, are normally uh, public key algorithms. Uh, uh, all these, um, <clears throat> so what to compose a cipher suite, cipher suite is a combination of cryptographic algorithms uh, uh, that relies on, the, uh, on those three com um, uh, components uh, uh, to, um, to realize the, the actual secure communication. Um, so the cipher suite is what normally um, uh, uh, SSL, TLS clients and servers uh, exchange to each other uh, with each other in uh, during the um, uh, the handshake. <coughs> what happens uh, in the next slide? We see how uh, cipher suite is normally composed. Uh, there is a public key part uh, uh, which also defines uh, uh, the message authentication. Uh, there is a block stream cipher uh, which defines the bulk symmetric uh, component uh, and the hash algorithm. And uh, uh, to um, advertise the support for a specific cipher, um, a string is normally used, uh, um, a code is normally used uh, between uh, the client and the server, uh, and they are assembled together in a string uh, that looks like uh, uh, the one on the bottom of the slide, TLS RSA with AES 128CDC SHA, uh, which contains uh, a list basically of the, of the three uh, selected algorithms uh, in the cipher search. Uh, in order to establish uh, uh, um, uh, communication successfully between a client and a server, uh, they need to be able to support uh, the same uh, cipher suite so the client can select uh, among uh, um, those supported by the server. 
Uh, next slide, we will see that in TLS 1.3, uh, we do have uh, a new cipher set uh, introduced. Uh, this is uh, the one on the bottom uh, in blue um, with TLS 1.3 uh, prepended to it. And uh, these rely on uh, new algorithms uh, that have been uh, um, uh, introduced by TLS 1.3, and uh, they are considered stronger. Um, than the one grayed out, which are still the support, the allowed ones uh, from TLS 1.2. And, uh, and you see there are also some uh, um, uh, outdated uh, and deprecated algorithms, uh, the one in red, um, that cannot be used anymore because uh, they have uh, uh, well-known vulnerabilities. Uh, uh, so, TLS 1.3 uh, uh, introduces a, a new set of uh, uh, stronger uh, uh, cipher suit. Um, in the next slide, we see that uh, um, TLS 1.3 also uh, um, commands for uh, abandon some algorithms that are obsolete and should not be used anymore. RC4 was a, a symmetric uh, uh, bulk cipher. Uh, that's not um, uh, secure. It has uh, very well-known vulnerabilities and shouldn't be used uh, in a cipher anymore. Um, SHA-1, uh, um, it's an hashing uh, algorithm as well as MD5, uh, which has been proved uh, uh, um, that uh, it's easy uh, to, to, um, uh, to break and, and provide collisions. Uh, so those are abandoned algorithms uh, uh, are specified in TLS 1.3 and they shouldn't be used anymore. Uh, besides that, uh, there are also in the next slide, uh, uh, some removed features uh, that were part of the uh, design of TLS 1.2. Um, features like uh, such as uh, renegotiation or uh, uh, custom DHA groups uh, that led to very well-known vulnerabilities uh, such as uh, uh, Poodle or Freak, Logjam, Robot, uh, Lucky13, um, a long list of uh, uh, vulnerabilities that have been uh, discovered in the past few years. Uh, uh, so TLS 1.3 um, aims to uh, ban this kind of algorithms uh, by providing a, um, a different mechanism uh, um, uh, to replace uh, these, old, uh, um, these old algorithms uh, uh, in order uh, to protect the system uh, from those uh, well-known vulnerabilities. Um, and uh, regarding the added algorithms uh, that we mentioned before, uh, in the next slide, uh, there are a few uh, algorithms uh, um, that have been added to the specification of TLS. Uh, ChaCha20, which is uh, very interesting for embedded devices because uh, being a stream cipher allows for um, encrypting uh, uh, very small payloads uh, um, down to one byte long uh, securely. So um, it, it's often used uh, for, for those uh, uh, limited payload uh, uh, um, sensor messaging. Uh, Poly uh, 1305, uh, uh, that's a new uh, message authentication code, uh, which is uh, uh, EAD based. Uh, Edward Curbs uh, for DSA and uh, uh, their counterpart uh, uh, for uh, um, public, uh, public encryption and key exchange. Uh, those are all new uh, algorithms uh, um, and new ciphers that are much stronger than those uh, used uh, by TLS 1.2. And luckily, for instance, in the case of the Edward cur curves, uh, uh, also very um, uh, simple to implement and uh, with, uh, with very limited resources. So um, again, this is a, a major advantage uh, for the IoT uh, market because it is possible to implement uh, ED25519 on uh, a device uh, with, uh, with very limited uh, resources and capabilities. Um, the next slide. Um, one of the features that have been deprecated uh, by TLS 1.3 is, uh, uh, is the old way of doing ses session resumption. Uh, this has a bit less to do with security vulnerability uh, and it's more related to uh, the fact that the ser TLS server uh, was um, forced by the old specifications uh, to keep the status of uh, uh, a previously interrupted session um, and also to implement a sort of a lookup mechanism based on a, on a hash key 
uh, to resume a previously interrupted session. Uh, in the new implementation proposed in the TLS 1.3, uh, there is a ticket on the client side uh, um, that contains already the service state of the current session. And this is again another major advantage for uh, um, embedded uh, uh, TLS servers because um, the implementation uh, uh, gets uh, much smaller uh, for, for um, implementing the session resumption. And uh, also, since uh, the server is stateless, uh, uh, you're not required anymore uh, to keep the state of each one of your clients uh, uh, when implementing the, the server, which means a lot less resources uh, are used by, by TLS uh, server in, uh, that supports TLS 1.3. Uh, so this concludes the part on, uh, on TLS 1.3. Um, uh, I'm going to uh, quickly introduce you about the advantages of using uh, WealthSSL uh, uh, over OpenSSL. And uh, there, there are a few key differences. As Riley already uh, mentioned earlier, um, we can be uh, 20 times smaller than OpenSSL. So Basically, this gives us a major advantage of integrating in smaller, smaller embedded devices, microcontroller based. Um, it uh, supports the latest standards. Uh, so TLS 1.3, as, as previously mentioned, uh, was already there uh, way before it was standardized. Um, uh, we do follow uh, all the latest uh, uh, developments uh, uh, from the from the security uh, community, and um, um, and of course uh, this gives us an advantage uh, from the point of view of the um, protocol standard protocol implementation. Um, from from the point of view of the hardware crypto, uh, we do have partnership uh, with uh, uh, most uh, common uh, MCU. Um, uh, um, manufacturers, uh, which allows us. Uh, to be uh, quite early in the market uh, with support for other acceleration uh, uh, on, on a huge uh, list of platforms. Um, and uh, of course, uh, it's worth mentioning uh, uh, again, the portability. Uh, we do have a long list of supported platforms. Uh, we do aim to, um, to extend this list every day. Um, uh, many, many other uh, things such as, um, of course, uh, uh, it's worth mentioning uh, uh, our license model, which allows you to download all the sources. Uh, uh, there is no difference between a commercial version and the version that's uh, on GitHub. And uh, uh, absolutely important, uh, 24 by 7 uh, phone, email, uh, support forums, uh, uh, not just for customers, but also if you are uh, integrating uh, um, Wolf is a cell in your open source project uh, uh, and you want to hear from us uh, uh, we are located internationally so there is likely uh, always someone replying to support uh, uh, on a very short time um, in case you're running uh, open SSL um, with your secure application uh, on uh, um, on a non-pure embedded device, such as uh, an embedded Linux system or, uh, or a fully, fully um, uh, IT compatible device, uh, such as a PC or a server. Uh, if your application is making use of uh, OpenSSL, it would be uh, very easy to, uh, to port it to WolfSSL. Uh, we do provide a compatibility layer, uh, which is uh, one to one uh, mapped to the calls of OpenSSL API. So it means that uh, uh, you, you can uh, replace OpenSSL uh, on your dynamically linked application uh, uh, by the, the linking it again with, uh, uh, with WolfSSL. And out of the box, you get support for uh, all the newest features, uh, our great TLS 1.3 implementation. Uh, uh, much reduced footprint size, uh, uh, the possibility to uh, uh, use uh, FIPS and uh, uh, our 24-7 uh, support uh, and uh, um, all the benefits uh, related to uh, using Wolf SSL. So uh, thank you very much and I'll be glad to answer your questions uh, in French or in English.